What's going on everyone? Welcome to Busy Dad's Board Gaming. My name is Neil Odette and today I'm going to be reviewing the game Face to Face published by Pandasaurus Games who provided me with a copy. So let's dive right into it. The game Face to Face is a two-player game in which each player will be attempting to discard their entire deck of cards before the other player. The way they'll be doing this is by discarding cards from their hand in ascending order onto one pile and descending order onto another. To win, you need to be the first player that gets rid of your draw pile as well as cards in hand. However, Anytime a player is unable to play at least two cards from their hand on their turn, their opponent is declared the winner. If you want a full how to play, I'll leave links in the description below. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out. Starting with first impressions, right out of the gate, I had a feeling I would enjoy this game. After all, I like good small box games that are quick to the table, quick to play, and quick to put away. And having played other small box games from Pandasaurus themselves, such as The Mind, uh, Ohanami, and Robots, I knew kind of what I was getting into with regards to the rules and things of that nature. The quality of this is what you would expect from a game that is just 15 bucks US. So other than that, there's really not much to say about it. You got some cards, you got a little box with a very tiny insert to separate the two decks. That's it. This is definitely not a game that is meant to blow you away with its incredible high production value. It's meant to be quick and fun to play and I think it succeeds in doing just that. Learning and teaching the game was an absolute breeze and took maybe about 10 minutes to do both kind of on the fly. Uh, what's great about a game like this is you can just jump into it and play around. And if you mess up any of the rules, it's not a big deal because it will maybe take you 15 or 20 minutes for your first playthrough. After that, it could easily be played in about 10 to 15 minutes. As you would probably expect, it's not overly complex either. Players take turns going back and forth, playing cards in ascending and descending order on their discard piles, and from time to time playing a single card on your opponent's discard pile. Which brings me to my next point, player interaction. For the most part, there isn't a lot of player interaction. As I said, at most on any given turn, you're going to play one card on your opponent's pile, and then the rest of the time, you're sort of just off on your own doing your own thing. The great thing is, or the bad thing I guess, depending on how you look at it, is any direct interaction that you do have with your opponent from playing cards to their piles is by its very nature good. What I mean by that is that you can only play cards to your opponent's piles if it helps them. That's it. That's the rule for, for playing to an opponent's discard pile. The reason you would want to do that is because if you only play cards on your own piles, the most you can draw from your draw pile at the end of your turn is two cards. So if you played all six of your cards, but only played them on your own piles, you can then only draw two back. If you play a card to your opponent's pile, effectively helping them in the process, at the end of the turn, you get to draw back up to your max hand limit of six allowing you to then play even more cards on your next turn, getting rid of more cards from your draw pile, etc., etc. It's in this back and forth with your opponent that really make this game what it is. Otherwise, it would just be two people playing the same solitaire game beside each other. Uh, we've had many good laughs testing out different strategies for getting rid of your cards as fast as possible and have really enjoyed our time with the game. I already kind of mentioned the length of the game. On average, it sits around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, a perfect balance of fun gameplay without the two hour commitment that is required for other deeper games. 
of course, it doesn't have the depth that would be provided by a game with a longer playtime, but that's not really the intent here. For us, we love playing games together, but we're busy. We have a busy work life. We have uh, two kids, so we're busy at home. So we don't always have the time or even the energy to set up a game that's going to take us a couple of hours to play. On those nights, games like this, The Mind, Ohanami, and many others are great. As for replayability, for us, there's nothing more to discover in this one. We played it about half a dozen times the first time we got it to the table. We've played it maybe a half a dozen times since then. And time after time, it's the same game. Same game, same strategies, it's sort of just all the same. If you've played it once, you've probably played it a hundred times. And to be honest with you, that's something I'm a-okay with. Because as I said, games like this serve their purpose. And they serve that purpose very well. And this one is no different. So, overall, is it worth it? Is it something I would recommend? Absolutely. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a solid two-player game that's quick to the table, quick and easy and fun to play, uh, and quick to put away, then yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Generally, I don't like to mention price in my reviews because it's all relative. What's an easy purchase of 15 bucks for me might not be the case for someone else. That being said, at just 15 bucks, I think there's more than enough fun here to be had. But there you have it. That was my review of the game face to face. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.